Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's my pleasure to present you this work that probably I've, most of you have already seen it. I've changed it, uh, little things, and this one is more concentrated with one thing. We have used standard, standard procedures to collect the images. Why not analyze them in a standard way? Because no matter if you capture them uh, using the standard method, if you are analyzing it differently, you will get different results. So, the idea of thermal symmetry to assess pathological states is not new. As almost 80 years was Freeman the first person to come with it. So, the object is of, of this work that I made in Glamorgan a, a few years ago and took me a long time to analyze was looking what is an acceptable value of differences between the two sides of the body in terms of limbs to be uh, considered symmetric. Then I wanted also to create, because we are using today computers to analyze regions of interest, <coughs> I wanted to analyze them in a semi automatical way. And I would like to establish, like I said before, a maximum acceptable value for symmetry. Because one of the things that we are missing in thermography is reference data. We have reference data in all the other medical imaging modalities that clinicians use in thermography. We don't. So, first we start with the definition that is we made in Glamorgan of thermal symmetry. That is basically the degree of similarity between two regions of interest mirrored across the longitudinal main axis of the human body. Identical in shape, identical in size, and as close as possible in angle from the camera. And the degree of similarity is measured in two terms, in terms of difference in mean temperature and difference in standard deviation of that region of interest. I tried to look at kurtosis and skewness, but I didn't get any conclusion. That's why I avoid them. So, past studi studies that we had, we had Yuramatsu in 1986, Goodman one year later, Yuramatsu replied again, but these three studies, they had a, a poor uh, methodology. The first one of all, they, they didn't characterize uh, the conditions of the examination of the room. Then in the second one, the regions of interest uh, were not very clear. They were very well defined in this paper here, but they used points to, 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 to measure to that. But as you can see, the discriminant value for abnorm normality and abnormality improved. Then, uh, t about 10 years ago, two studies were conducted in Asia. One in, in Taiwan, another one in, no, one in China, another one in Taiwan. And the results, as you can see, are in, in <coughs> are converging to of these two, but are different from these ones. <coughs> One reason for that was technology changed, and from ten years till now, it changed again. So we need to evaluate that values. What we are really measuring? It's a question. So this is the setup of the methodology. I have thirty-nine male volunteers. <coughs> Because we, the board, we didn't have any female in the team, so we could just get male people. This is the age verification body mass index. We used the standard protocol of Lamorgan. The temperature of the room was 22 degrees, humidity less than 50%, and 15 minutes acclimatization for everybody. And we also used the standard views on the Lamorgan protocol to collect the images. So. The equipment was also set up at least 90 minutes before appointment to be stable. And I will explain you. Then I have built uh, models that I will show you. They were based in the regions of interest, geometrical models, and a method to standardize the images. Because rem have in your mind, you just can compare objects in images if they are equal in shape and in position or else you are not missing nothing. Here are the regions of interest that I've used for the upper and lower limbs. The 
defined it by Kurzweil, being the Lamorth protocol paper. So, all of these regions of interest <coughs> have some physiological background that justify them. Here are geometrical models that I created based on that ones. And the reason why you have triangles here is because the triangle is the most simple shape to represent an object. And that was quite useful for what I'm explaining after. And sorry, I'm a bit technical here. Uh, I have used barycentric coordinates because this also colored homogeneous coordinates have a particularity. They are all between two uh, polygons of the same number of vertices. Every uh, pixel inside has a correspondence. And that was a problem when you want to translate data from quantitative data from one image to another. You don't want to lose data or scramble that data. So the only way to enforce the correspondence was using this. But this just works if you don't, if you have a change in scale of less than 10% for rising or decreasing the region of interest. More than that, you start creating a big error. The error within that is less than 2%. So, uh, here I have the example of the hands. You have here the, the image of the hands. You have the overlap mask with the anatomical control points that limitate that geometrical model that you have to adjust with the mouse. There are already, uh, I made already some progress in identifying some of that points that are adjusted automatically. And then you create a new image based on the first one. And he, here, to have a better understanding, I will show you. For example, I, here I have four images of the hands. We can look to all of our hands. We have different sizes. Okay, we all have five fingers in each hand, but they are slightly different on shape and size. How to compare them? That was my problem. Imagine when you had, like me, in my PhD, I had 13,000 images of hands. How, how would I analyze them? <laughs> so, the solution was this one. Then I can compare them. They are in the same position and the same size. So, the results I have obtained were the largest ones. The difference was in the interior arc, difference in mean temperature, and in standard deviation was in the dorsal heart. So, it's the less symmetrical region is the heart. Or where I have the biggest difference between the regions of interest. Fit as well. And this is just using regional views and not total body views. In the previous uh, presentations about this study, I've shown both. Here I'm just showing regional. Uh, I have looked at also to rely reliability and to the effectiveness of the measurements. And as you can see, where I had the best results were in hands. More consistency of that as well. <coughs> So here is an example of this theory about the thermal symmetry of the human body can be used to assess what can be pathological if he has a sign of pain, because it's not just the image, he has to have some signs, some pathological signs. For example, in this case, the left feet, he was injured. But as you can see, there was a difference that goes above the difference I'm claiming here. So, this study had confirmed and improved. The study is made 20 years ago and 10 years ago. They are slightly similar to the results of 10 years ago. So, technology changed, but the results are basically the same. What is good? It means that <coughs> the study made 10 years ago were good quality studies. But the big difference with this is the method. We use the standard capture methods for the images and the standard analysis method. That is something new. So the difference now is 0.5 more or less 0.3 degrees. Above that difference, if he has claims, pathological claims, he may have a problem. And it's 
can be used as a reference stack. So here I have four different parts, different limbs, different values, and in mean temperature and standard deviation. So like I, I started before my presentation, I would like to now to invite you all to participate in this event in Porto. Uh, there are the, the scientific program I expect to be good, but also we made some work to have a very good social program. So <laughs> we will have a visit to, to the House of Music in Porto, that is a very famous building. Not just because the it passed four times the budget because it also has a funny shape. <laughs> and uh, we have done some work with demography and musicians as well. So here is a website. If you have any doubts, you can contact me or contact me through this email. The registration, as I said, is open since last week. And that's the deadline is 29th February. So demography needs us to keep them alive. <laughs>